Willis has made quite the mess for herself. She is saying that she's being scrutinized because she's black, but we all know that's just because she made bad decisions. It has nothing to do with her skin color. She was in court today where her requirement to testify in her lover's divorce proceeding was delayed. She's pretty thankful about that. Now, Nathan Wade, who she hired to prosecute the RICO case against Donald Trump, that guy then billed the good people of Fulton County, Georgia, almost 700 grand. It's important to note that he's never prosecuted a felony, and he was getting paid way more the actual rate than any other expert that would have come in and done this. He's Fannie, Fannie Willis's lover. But to make matters worse, if you throw back a few years ago, this is what Willis said about sleeping around the workplace. And um, I certainly will not be choosing people to date that work under me. Let, let me just say that. Really? So typical. This is, this is how these people, they think they're like, the rules don't apply to them. They can say whatever they want and do a completely different thing and nobody will notice. What's even crazier is that she's prosecuting Donald Trump for using the system, the legal system, to pursue the measures that he and his attorneys believed were true, regardless of what the media, what January 6th committee, and all the liberal media hacks are saying. They were pursuing the legal measures afforded to them to get to the bottom of legitimate concerns they had. Never before in the history of ever have DAs gone after the lawyers of clients pursuing things. But, but in this case, Fannie and her lover roped them in as co-conspirators. But despite Fannie pushing the boundaries of a system to go after a political opponent, she's facing questions from a judge about her own misconduct. She herself is using her office to try to intimidate her boyfriend's ex-wife. Willis, however, claimed that she cannot provide unique personal knowledge on matters relevant to the divorce because the marriage was ending on the grounds that it was irretrievably broken. Fine, that may be, but then why would she now say that she, I mean, she was forced to testify in a case that she was intimately involved in? She's now saying that that could be obstructing justice. The new report saying now that she's threatening charges against her lover's ex. Ms. Quote, Ms. Willis implied threat to pursue charges against a defendant and her counsel based on inconvenient facts from her personal life is an affront to the integrity of her office. This is the stuff you see on like a Jerry Springer show. Of course Fanny doesn't want to testify in the case against the ex-wife of her lover. Who would? Because now she's going to be put under oath. She's going to be deposed. And for a case that is or she's already tried to have sealed. But now in some bizarre legal strategy, and I think it's a huge ethical blunder, she's going to throw the weight of her DA's office behind her personal attempts to keep from having any legal liabilities by going after the ex-wife for what? I mean, really? This is a bad look, lady. And here's why she's trying to dodge this. In Georgia, under Title 16, Chapter 9, Section 9 of the Georgia Code of Criminal Conduct, it spells it out pretty clearly. It says, a married person commits the offense of adultery when he voluntarily has sexual intercourse with a person other than his spouse and upon conviction thereof shall be punished as for a misdemeanor. Now, Fanny's got exposure here, folks. She was participated in that. And the legal standard for a DA is higher than John Q. Public. If they've been found guilty of a misdemeanor, especially in relation to a case that she is prosecuting, it's a big problem for her case. Not only for the case, but for her career, too. And in this case, is as much about getting to the facts. I mean, she, she could care less about the facts than the January 6th committee did. But there's a lot more culturally weighing on this case than this, just this case. This is not the federal trial. This is beyond the federal trial. This one is a state case that could actually send Trump to jail, for which even if he won, he couldn't pardon himself out of it. Now, it'll probably be appealed beyond that should they get a conviction. But the investment by the deep state here is heavy and should not be underestimated. So I don't put it past any of them to do anything to keep this case alive and Fannie Willis afloat. She's got some big defenders in her corner. But that's just it. The hubris of these people is amazing. All of them. All the people going after Trump. Not just legally, but politically. A perfect example. Lincoln Project. They made hay over Trump's conduct for just about anything he would ever say for years, only to have their own members charged with sexual misconduct themselves. These prosecutors are no different. The, the only difference is that they have the power and the state behind them with a huge budget. And what's worse, it's our tax dollars. They, they can charge people. They can investigate people up to the hill. Do they have a case? Well, most of the time, no. Ask Robert Mueller. He had a $50 million taxpayer-funded flop with the Russia collusion case, and they just moved on to the next thing. 
These people cost the subjects of these investigations their life savings, they ruin careers and families and reputations, and in some cases, the futures. Any consequences for these people? No. Again, just move on to the next one. Especially when it comes to Trump. Those tasked with enforcing the law could not care less about it. All these judges and these prosecutors, in my opinion, they're all compromised. In New York State, the fraud case that no one was defrauded in was brought by Letitia James. She campaigned on getting him. I say one name. Donald Trump. That should motivate you. Stop your <laughs> vote. Will you, will you sue him for us? Oh, we're going to definitely sue him. We're going to be a real pain in the He said I know my name personally. Running for attorney general because I will never be afraid to challenge this illegitimate president when our fundamental rights are at stake. We need to focus on Donald Trump and his abuses. We need to follow his money. We need to find out where he's laundered money. All of those transactions have happened here in New York City. Mm. And the judge in that case, Arthur Engron, the guy who was smiling at the cameras, making jokes, he's loving every minute of presiding over Trump. You see the pattern here, folks? They're finding jurisdictions to put Trump cases in and then figuring out a case once they found the jurisdiction. This defamation sexual assault case with E. Jean Carroll, never mind, this woman is kooky as all get out. All right, this is leaving serious credibility just on her, but the judge, Lewis Kaplan, who wouldn't even allow Trump a one-day delay because of his mother-in-law's funeral, now the same judge may not even allow Trump to be in New Hampshire on the day of their primary, brought to you by Alvin Bragg, who's anything but impartial. You also have Jack Smith, who has two cases against Trump. He has the documents case in Mar-a-Lago and the, inter uh, the election interference that could get thrown out altogether, depending on what the Supreme Court rules on presidential immunity. But after today's razor wire ruling, we'll see how that goes. But let's not forget that Jack Smith has a history of going after Republicans, even went after the governor of Virginia. That was then overturned by the Supreme Court in an 8-0 to zero decision. He, he's prosecuting case where Judge Tanya Chutkin, of no less, already said in open court while trying other January 6 cases that Trump is guilty and should be charged with whatever she thinks. I mean, no, don't worry about her impartiality here. Don't even get me started on the sham January 6 committee littered with Adam Schiff, who, if you recall, lied to the American people about seeing evidence of collusion. Look, you can see evidence in plain sight uh, on the issue of collusion, pretty compelling evidence. Now, uh, there's a difference between seeing evidence of collusion and being able to prove a criminal conspiracy beyond a reasonable doubt. All these people, they lob these accusations and charges, and they think that they're somehow immune. Look, if you're going after the likely the next president of the United States, you better have an airtight case, and everyone involved better be as pure as the driven snow. Maybe this is a lesson to Republicans and that they need to start learning. Start looking into everyone that is going after Trump. That's what the left does to Republicans all the time. You report something they don't like, they'll dig 10 years ago, pull up some skeleton in your closet, and be relentless and continue to publish the same thing until you step down or are pushed aside. Look, I say it all the time. This is what Democrats do. Hell, when I was in the Trump administration, they dug up some podcasts from 10 years ago from a soundbite they didn't like. Perhaps Republicans should start doing the same thing because it might deter some of these loons from trying to get Trump. It might actually force them to play within the laws that they say they're trying to uphold. I guess here's my call to action tonight, guys. Reporters, independent journalists, political operatives, whatever. Maybe it's time to investigate the investigators because so far, every time someone investigates them, we find out that they're not exactly Mother Teresa. And these prosecutions are in the court of the public opinion as much as they are in the courtroom. 